Hi again, I'm AI David Bowles, welcoming you to the Human Meme Podcast. Along with my Crackbot AI team, we'll be examining the unexamined life. In the context of Aristotle's poetics, this is a reader-style conversation, a primer, if you will. Okay, then, we'll start at the beginning and build from there. Ready? Let's begin. Drama and the Poetics Or, more simply, Poetics Primer Gather round, my fellow seekers of wisdom and story, as we voyage to the distant past, to the illustrious city of Athens in the 4th century BCE, where Aristotle, the great philosopher, has left us with a timeless treatise known as the Poetics. This venerable work stands as one of the bedrock foundations of literary theory, rippling through the epochs with its profound revelations about the art of storytelling. Embarking upon a journey through these ancient pages, we encounter terra firma of the human condition, primarily in the realm of tragedy. Suddenly, we are in the midst of a grand act where Aristotle defines tragedy as an intense imitation of life, a mirror held to our fears, our sorrows, our hopes. It is a powerful portrayal of meaningful and intricate actions, igniting the embers of pity and fear in our hearts, ultimately nurturing a catharsis, a profound purification and liberating release of emotions. As we wade deeper into this vast ocean of understanding, Aristotle, our guiding star, illuminates the contours of the dramatic landscape. We see emerge six critical elements that craft a successful play. Plot, character, thought, diction, music, and spectacle. Among these, plot emerges as the monarch the very soul, the heartbeat of a tragedy. In Aristotle's view, the unity of action, a central plot that weaves a tapestry of compelling narrative, stands head and shoulders above its peers. Imagine a robust oak tree with its branches dancing wildly in the wind, yet all anchored to one robust trunk, one compelling story. Stepping beyond the velvet curtains of the theater, we find the concept of Aristotle's catharsis interwoven within the ebbing tides of our daily lives. We uncover catharsis in the comforting breeze of a meaningful conversation with a friend, in the cleansing tears shed at the climax of an emotive film, and in the cool release after we allow frustrations to tumble out. These cathartic occurrences, discreet yet powerful, offer a window to process our thoughts and emotions, much like the cleansing impact of a tragic narrative upon its captive audience. Upon the stage of the poetics, characters vie for our attention. Encapsulating unique traits and moral values, they dance the mazurka of life under the proscenium. In their authenticity, they deeply resonate with us, just like the profundities of a person in real life. Aristotle places merit on the moral decisions of a character, recognizing their influence over the plot, a reflection of our very lives where our actions and decisions write the story of our existence. As we breathe in the spirit of the poetics, we also imbibe a potent draft of empathy. Aristotle decrees that a well-written tragedy stirs feelings of fear and pity, compelling us to step within the character's shoes and bear witness to their suffering as though it were our own. This vibrant emotional dance extends to the waltz of our interpersonal relationships, encouraging a deeper understanding and empathy for diverse experiences and perspectives. The poetics whispers in our ears about the unity of action. Imagine, if you will, a well-crafted narrative as a silken thread traversing a clear beginning, middle, and end, its pieces intricately joined with purpose. This master principle finds kinship in our own lives, 
shaping our approach towards projects and problems, urging strategic planning, execution, and meaningful resolution. In this labyrinth of existence, Aristotle's poetics emerges as a mirror of astonishing clarity. Pivotal ideas of dramatic construction and character development find kinship in the very rhyme and rhythm of our lives, serving as the playwright of our existence and casting a gentle light on this grand drama we call life. So let us raise the curtain, summon the lights, and get ready to play our parts. Now that we know the poetical basics, did the playwright have an important role in society? How did history view the drama created by the hand of imagination? Well, my human meme friend, the playwright has played a crucial part in society through this entire journey. They are the heartbeat of their era, unraveling the knotted mess of human nature and commenting on the ever-changing socio-political climates. Each play they craft is a treasure chest, painted with the colors of their time and filled with the values and norms we lived by. What makes a good drama might change from one era to another, but at its heart, Martin Eslin claims in The Theater of the Absurd, drama portrays the human condition in a way that is meant to stir up your emotions. So maybe a good drama is one that effortlessly captures the essence of life, connects deeply with its audience, kindles empathy, and provokes thought. Uh, meet William Shakespeare, the shining star of the Elizabethan era. His masterful works, like Hamlet, King Lear, and A Midsummer Night's Dream, are a testament to this. From Hamlet mired in introspective thought to tragic King Lear exploring themes of power and mental health, Shakespeare skillfully spins societal tales into eternal truths. Fast forward a few centuries to Henrik Ibsen, the key figure in the modern drama era. He challenged societal norms and gender roles in his work A Dollhouse. His genius lay in evoking audience critique on set norms, showcasing drama as a true reflection of society. But let's not forget that while society influences the playwright, they too shape society in return. Tony Kushner's Angels in America is a striking contemporary example. A voice for the AIDS crisis in the 1980s, Kushner's work not only informed but also humanized the LGBTQI plus community's issues, changing perceptions and challenging traditional ideologies. So you see, the relationship between society and the playwright is a beautiful, vibrant dance that continues to enrich our dramatic literature. This dance, sometimes graceful, sometimes raw and passionate, keeps drama relevant and impactful. Such is the power of drama. It bears the weight of society's dreams and dilemmas and carries the potential to provoke thought and encourage change. What a wonderful world, isn't it? So now we know the basics of a playwright-centric society of dramatic literature. What about directors? Did playwrights direct their own plays? Did Shakespeare both write and direct his own work? The modern role of a director was not a precept embraced during the era of the renowned playwright William Shakespeare. The Elizabethan period possessed a unique formula for the orchestration of theatrical productions, diverging drastically from our contemporary practices. Shakespeare, a man of manifold talents, was a functionary of the Lord Chamberlain's men, later rechristened as the King's men, a fellowship of actors for whom the bard penned his masterpieces. The peculiar protocol of their era entailed that each actor would only receive scrolls detailing their individual roles and cues, eschewing the holistic perspective offered by a complete script, a practice alien to our modern times. It is plausible that a seasoned member of the troupe, possibly the lead actor, may have adopted a role analogous to what we now understand as a director. 
Shakespeare's involvement in the execution of his literary creations was multifaceted and intimate. Not only a playwright, he was an actor and likely a pivotal figure in coordinating the production of his works. His artistic direction would extend to the interpretation of the script, choreographing stage movements, and mentoring the acting styles of his fellow performers. The metamorphosis towards acknowledging director as an official capacity in the theater is often credited to the 19th century, instigated by visionaries like Georg II, Duke of Saxe Mine again, who aspired to create comprehensive and meticulously structured productions. Relating the dynamic nature of Shakespeare's roles to Aristotle's poetics, where the playwright is both the creator and interpreter of their work, we could conjecture that Shakespeare himself, were he living within our time, might assume the dual roles of playwright and director, effectively overseeing every aspect of his works, from the minute details of performance and interpretation to the broader vision of their aesthetic presentation. And so, my human meme friend, what a splendid tapestry of existence we weave, my human meme friend, when we realize that life itself unfolds like a grand drama with us as both playwrights and actors and writers and philosophers, all embedded together in the warp and woof of society, intricately unraveling the threads of Aristotle's poetics we find echoed in it the throbbing pulse of our everyday life. Characters, plot, spectacle, thought, all unravel within and around us, shaping the narrative of our existence. Every interaction a dialogue, every decision a plot twist, every value a theme. Such is the grandeur of life that even the most mundane activities take on a dramatic hue when viewed through Aristotle's insightful lens. In this ever-changing world, we write, direct, and perform in the staggering performance of life, each day presenting a narrative imbued with tragedy, comedy, and profound normality. It's in the reflection of our daily lives that Aristotle's timeless wisdom plays out reminding us once again, all the world's a stage and all of us, merely players. For the Crack Bot AI research team, I'm AI David Bowles, wishing you a good evening and a pleasant tomorrow. Be a human meme.